Alright, Pokemon is it? Well, I guess that's what we're doing. This is a game that I had against Sirius Leo with the numbers after his name, which will be in the title, which I can't remember, which I really should because uh, he's been breeding a lot of stuff for me, which is really nice of him and it's fantastic and he knows what he's doing. So I would recommend you should go check him out. But uh, until that doth happen, let's get into this game in which I lead off with a Vaporeon and he leads off with a Gliscor. Now, this is a pretty fantastic situation for myself self and I assume that maybe he's going to switch out fearing the ice beam and so I go for the toxic um, wouldn't have really mattered because if he did stay in he's obviously going to protect and get his toxic orb anyway and that's what he does uh, so all is fair and square now I was going to switch goes into Gengar potentially predicting my double toxic which uh, I was thinking about maybe going for, but I decided to stick with the Ice Beam uh, and hit whatever came in, and it ends up working because his Gengar gets frozen. That's the first thing I froze this gen, the first thing I've seen anything get frozen, and the animation is kind of funny because it literally freezes the 3D model in place, uh, so that's cool. Goes into Scizor, which I burn with the school, so all the side effects happening with this Vaporeon, uh, getting super lucky here, and that is fantastic, man, getting Scizor burned early game. I am a big fan of it. So now he's going to U-turn, does absolutely nothing because of the burn, and uh, goes into the Chestnut. Now Chestnut is a little bit of annoyance for Vaporeon. Uh, I do get off the Toxic uh, because I was predicting him to U-turn out or even just flat switch, and it works out in this situation where I have now frozen one thing, burned another, and poisoned a third. So Vaporeon, king of the fucking status here, um, is you know taking no prisoners, just absolutely going for it. Now I have to switch I uh, don't want to take a seed bomb, so I'm going to go into Shebeard, the great and grand Shebeard, who, uh, even though is the special defensive uh, monster, can still take a crit seed bomb. Uh, because of the resistance and uh, it's still relaxed nature, so, you know, got a good amount of defense in there as well. But I certainly cannot take a hit such as the one which is about to be gone for once the poison's been, you know, worn down. That's the Aerial Ace. That is going to do a lot of damage. I really didn't expect Chestnut to carry it. I didn't actually know that it learned it. So I thought that he would be forced to switch out, which is why I Leech Seed uh, instead of going for, you know, a Phantom Force or a Protect or whatever. Probably should have protected. That would have been a much smarter idea because he was already poisoned. Um, I was just thinking that if I protected, he could probably take advantage of that by switching freely. So I decided to try and predict around and go for Leech Seed, but it doesn't kind of work out. Now he's definitely going to be predicting my Protect and goes into the Talonflame and gets it right because I did not want to take another hit. Uh, and this thing is now going to really threaten me horribly. So I am going to go for the Phantom Force here, thinking that he was just going to kill me. Um, he obviously predicted my Protect again by going for the Tailwind, uh, but it uh, works out okay in my favor because it means that uh, Shebeard, my Trevenant, doesn't die quite yet. Um, is able to go for the Phantom Force while this thing sets up a Sword Dance in my face. I'm honestly not too worried about it because I have... What do I have? I do have something to deal with Talonflame. Um that means it can't sweep me straight away. Uh, I'm gonna, I feel like protect, no, I don't protect here. I'm just gonna let it kill me, um, get that recoil damage, uh, and then go into the thing with which I can stop the Talon Flame, which I'm completely blanking on now, and uh, I should probably speed this up a little bit more, because this is a long game. This is like 42 turns long, so um, that is uh, a thing, I guess. Uh, Aegislash, obviously. I can easily go into Aegislash uh, when, uh, you know, because basically, the only thing that he can have priority with is a flying move and a plus two Brave Bird is definitely not going to kill Aegislash. So I can just go into Blade Form, go for the Shadow Sneak and fish him off. But um, he has Gliscor, obviously, as we saw at the beginning of the game. So just go back to that and take the hit. You know, it's a crit, but still takes it really well because he's a freaking Gliscor, goddammit. So the Tailwind peters out, which is fantastic. It means that that thing's not going to be a pain anymore. And I'm going to go straight back to Vaporeon because what else am I going to go to to deal with a Gliscor? This is my best option. Physically defensive and got the Ice Beam and Scald, you know, you know how this works. Uh, I'm not really sure that I need to explain anything. It's going to protect Stall a bit, which is highly annoying because it just means that this game is going to go slower and slower. But we're both running things with Protect and using Toxic. So I guess Ferris is square in the end. It's just you're going to have to just deal with it going to have to. So he's going to switch out. Going to Gengar this time, predicting my Scald, um, seeing as I went for it on his Protect, so that he could potentially unthaw himself, but I go for the Ice Beam instead, and uh, I should be able to finish off this Gengar as long as he doesn't thaw out, but spoke too soon because he does. Goes for the Thunderbolt, and Vaporeon doesn't die. Doesn't. Lives on one. One HP, just a clutch. 
the clutchest of clutches, and that is pretty fantastic. I'm not going to lie, pretty satisfied with Vaporeon living there. It does have a tendency to do that. The theme of 1 HP, uh, I feel, is going to perpetuate, so we'll we'll see about that for the moment. I'm going to protect on the Scizor, get a little bit of extra burn damage on that thing. I'm just going to wear it down more. It means that it's going to be easier to take out later. Not that it's really challenge to take out at this point because a burn sizzle is practically useless um, still okay for u-turning and stuff but other than that it's pretty much done so I'm gonna go into a slash uh, predicting him to go for that or whatever other move that he decides to go for well actually no he's obviously gonna go for it because he's choice banded I, I think and he's locked into it so he has to so it goes into gliscor which I probably don't want to stay in on um, because I won't be able to do a lot to it, but uh, I may have to use it later on if uh, that becomes the case when it's Gliscor, just the one thing still alive that's really going to annoy me. But he makes the nice prediction uh, of me switching and goes for a Toxic. Um, makes my Vaporeon a little bit sad, but it's not a huge deal because Vaporeon is got like no HP anyway and he was never going to live. So now he switches, goes to Scizor, which I find that was a bit of a weird switch. I'm not quite sure why he would do that, why he wouldn't just stay in an Earthquake because his Gliscor is faster than my Vaporeon. Um, so he goes into Scizor uh, and basically means that I can protect again. No, I'm going to die this turn. No, ooh, yeah, but I can protect again because then his Sizzle will be still in here. It's not going to die to the burn this turn. And it means it's set up fodder for my Aegis Slash. That's what my plan was, to let the Sizzle um, stay alive while my Vaporeon dies and then bring an Aegis Slash and he is locked into Bullet Punch, I think, or U-Turn, or one of, the, one of the two, doesn't really matter at this point. But I can go into Aegis Slash freely and uh, set up a free Sword Starts as he switches into uh, Gliscor, which I know can definitely take a plus two hit from me, um, but I didn't actually know how well Aegis Slash would take the hit from Gliscor. Turns out that I actually live it with a good amount, over half, and had I gone for a second sword stance here, uh, I think I probably would have been able to finish the thing off because um, Ironhead would have taken him down to the point where a Shadow Sneak would have killed him. Um, definitely, even after protecting from the Poison Heal and everything, plus four Shadow Sneak would have done the job. But that wasn't the case, and unfortunately because of my misjudgment and the fact that I didn't think I could take an Earthquake as well as I did, uh, I am unfortunately not going to be able to finish off Gliscor, and taking out Gliscor would have been really, really good. So, I've made a bad misplay with the Sword Stance, and unfortunately because of that, uh, this Gliscor is going to get the better of my Aegis Slash. I take it down to a really low amount, but of course he has really he has protect he has every ability to essentially screw me over once more by gaining all of that HP back so I go into a zoom roll and I be really dumb because I protect uh, I, I forget sorry I don't protect he's the one protecting I'm the one forgetting that he has protect because I'm an idiot I go for play rough thinking that he was gonna switch not wanting to take a water move but he can just protect see what I lock myself into and then accordingly switch uh, instead uh, I miss a play rough on him and and, uh, you know, he roosts before me because he's faster. So don't think that was a huge deal because probably wouldn't have done over 50% anyway. But I'm now going to switch going to Scizor because it's my only thing left apart from this and Azumarill. And I predict the Toxic uh, get up a Sword Stance on his Earthquake. And I'm thinking, okay, I can Sword Stance again and then, you know, roost after that and I'll be good. Only thing is, once again, ladies and gentlemen, me and Sword Stance not getting along whatsoever, I miscalculate completely and I cannot take another earthquake from this Gliscor. I die to the third one and my plus four is wasted. I don't even use bullet punch. Mega dumb plays here. I'm playing horribly around this Gliscor. My Aegis Slash could have taken it out. My Scizor could have dealt with it. But all for nothing because in the end I die every single time. So, Gliscor still at a good amount of HP, still able to take me on. And I go uh, for the uh, the Waterfall, not the Aqua uh, Jet, the Waterfall to try and get rid of him. Goes into Chestnut because he has multiple resistances to water at this point. He could have gone into Blastoise, but he felt, I guess, Chestnut was less desirable. Then goes for the Hammer Arm. Uh, oh yeah, I still have Houndoom, that's why. Uh, yeah, he obviously was predicting me to switch because I could take a, uh, you know, a grass move with my Houndoom, although not very well, considering Houndoom's defense is pretty bad and I'm running hasty on that Houndoom um, so I wouldn't have taken it well so a 
poor over prediction on his part, which he didn't really need to go for. He could have wrapped up this game pretty quickly, um, but he ended up just trying to go for it. Uh, actually winds up nicely because Hammer Arm not only does nothing to me, but it also makes him slower, meaning on the next turn I can finish him with a waterfall, which is exactly what I do. Goes into Sizzle, which is st uh, 1 HP as well, by the way. Not sure if I pointed that out earlier, but that's another thing which lived with 1 HP. Means it's able to come in here and actually go for a move to try and do some damage to me, uh, which it does a decent uh, chunk, but uh, not enough to where it can really uh, bring me down. Goes into Gliscor, and I'm not quite sure why he's stalling here, because I think he could have easily gone into Blastoise a while ago uh, and been able to deal with me. But maybe he was afraid that uh, a hit from a Waterfall with Azumarill, uh, followed up by a couple of Dark Pulses with my Houndoom, would have been too much. Um, but he ends up living! Because this is Gliscor, and it is a fucking nightmare, and a banded waterfall from max attack, huge power, Zoomerl doesn't kill it. That's why. That's why. And uh, in the end, he is going to be able to finish me off with an earthquake, after toxicking me, and after stalling with protect and everything. And did I mention I hate Gliscor? Because I hate Gliscor. So I go into Barthandalus, my final Pokemon, my Mega Houndoom, who is going to Mega Evolve and just annihilate this thing with a Fire Blast. No chance of him living. I really should have gone into this thing sooner. I don't know why I was dicking around with the physical attackers on Gliscor, because I had this guy and he could deal with them. So now in comes Talonflame and is probably going to kill him with the Brave Bird and that is going to be the game. So, uh, good game but I'd no 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 I live with one one HP again one HP again tell you what it's the theme the theme of this game is one HP so in comes Blastoise my only chance to defeat this Blastoise is to get flinches with Dark Pulse and I am going to pray to the Hacks Gods and try my utmost to do that so I'm going to go for the Dark Pulse and get the flinch and I am going to really annihilate him that is exactly what happens I'm going to go for the second one get the crit flinch and that's going to be the game and I win uh, only it doesn't happen that way because he doesn't flinch or get critted and Water Pulse is going to finish off my Houndoom so Mega Houndoom bites the dust unfortunately doesn't get much action in this game and that's that is going to close out with a 1-0, a narrow, narrow win, but, uh, you know, that's just what happens, I guess, when I play dumb around Gliscor. Lesson of the day, don't be dumb with Gliscor like me, otherwise you'll wind up losing, so... Anyway, if you enjoyed this game, you can feel free to leave a like down below. You can try and leave a comment, although I've heard that it's nigh on impossible because YouTube are fucking morons and Google Plus is being shoved down our throats and they can literally go fuck themselves. So if you don't comment, then I completely understand. And uh, if you just give me a smile to your screen, that's all that's necessary. Give a like instead, that would help. Um, because apparently you don't need to have any barriers to go past to leave a like on a video. But when commenting's involved, oh, that's a whole nother story. Anyway, I'm I'm pretty pissed at this change. I'm pretty sure most people are. Um, so fuck you, Google Plus, and I'll see you guys next time on another video. Uh, goodbye.